we go. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. allow it. We, may, we may actually be live already. We may be live already. Did you, did you show? Uh, yes, we I did. may be live. Yep, I'm going to okay. mute. All right, yeah, good, 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 good. All right. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We are live. Hello, people. Hello. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to everybody. And may the mornings be with you. Good uh, mornings and welcome. Yes. Oh, and Bina is here too. Brilliant. brilliant yes. Brilliant. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I know you were there, but, uh, you know, that you just, yeah, you just, yeah, just celebrating okay, so, that you, yeah. And shows so, here, do sure. shows us on mute. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Always celebrate, always celebrate. Always ce you know, yes. by the way, talking about celebration and appreciation, I noticed on on one of the the um, networks that I watch, a uh, news network, right? That mm -hmm. the one of the hosts says said, I appreciate you to her guests. Her, every guest that came on, right? Uh, she was a fully in host. Well, she, she has a show on the weekends, but she's not one of the regular week, right. weekday ones. You know? so, she, oh. mm. so she said this multiple times to the guests. She had like three or four guests. And every one she said, I appreciate you. She didn't say, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you being here, which they, they sometimes say. In offer. She said, mm. I appreciate you. Now, uh, it's part four, not part three. Dang it. Uh, um, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, well, welcome, because I, uh, I copied uh, before it. you continue, please yes, go okay, ahead. Before go you ahead. continue, I just want to yeah. say that uh, after having yesterday's like really, really, really long session, yesterday was amazing because we were going into details. This is what we love. This is what we really want to do. Uh, not, not skipping things, not uh, ignoring points, no answers, exactly. just because of the time duration. So yesterday yeah. we took that liberty and just we just enjoy, keep going, keep going, keep going. And yes, that was really yes. amazing. Uh, uh, Lisa shared a lot and she added a lot of value. So I'm so thankful for her. And uh, also that that Sil has shared like really uh, sometimes a uh, few things become not so obvious, not so prominent in our lives while we are just uh, being on there on some way, like in way of impeccability. Some of the like really early one, though I, I uh, count myself in a very uh, scrupulous power learners, uh, I still, of course, I'm not forgetting anything, at least not deliberately, but uh, yeah. still, it was a good reminder to go back again and have yes. those things revised yes. and those relive yes. moments. So yesterday was a big, big, big time yes. For, yes. For, of celebration for me. Yes, so yes. yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. I'm sorry, I'm just excited. I just want to say yeah. hello to everybody. Yes. Uh, so hello, Kathy. Uh, you know, Kathy, I've uh, been a, a friend of Kathy's or Kathy's been a friend for like mm -hmm. since one of the very early friends I had. So oh, welcome, is... welcome, Kathy. It's so exciting to have you here. Yes. Wonderful that year. And then, of course, Ramsey. Hello, hello, Ramsey. And hello, Makayla. Now, before I go any further, I've got two things that I want to share. First of all, I want to give out a profound profound, deep, appreciative shout out to all the nobodies in the world. Okay. <laughs> and I got 37126. Ooh, I have no yes, idea who 37126 is. John is, is. Uh, oh. John is uh, It's John, not oh, prisoner John. number 37126. Okay. okay. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Can you hear me? Right, so, so wonderful, John. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. We, we, we are Hello, live, sir. John. We are live. So, so I'm, I'm just starting and introducing, and, and I want okay. to just share two things. So you come right at a good time here, my little opening thing that I remember to do. First Great. of all, I'm giving a shout out of appreciation and mourners, and I've got something exciting to share to all the nobodies in the world. If you think you're a nobody, if you feel like a nobody, whatever, I am giving a shout out to you. Yes. 
Why? Because nobody is perfect. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Okay, good job. <laughs> nobody is perfect. Yes. That, I like so that. Th there's a layeredness to this. Yep, too, I get right? it. Yes. Okay, it's a joke on the one hand, but on the other hand, take some solace from this too. If you feel like, you know, oh, nobody's perfect, right? So it's a, it's a, a very subtle well, thing. So a lot to I mean, nobody, it, so I'm right? perfect. Exactly, exactly, right? But also that, that also in the reverse to understand that, you know, just because you're a nobody, well, every, nobody's perfect. So, so what? It doesn't matter in other words, right? Now, of course, from our position here that we are coming from, everybody's a somebody because we celebrate difference and we celebrate individually. There's no such thing as a nobody. In other words, it's not possible to be a nobody. So just a little subtle point, but a bit of fun as well, right? <laughs> Let's all have some fun. The second point is uh, Ramsey. Why is Ramsey being settled out? Just some fun, Ramsey. So I so, say, hello, Ramsey. But you know, I was thinking that I love your name. And, and I think your name can be like a like a movie name or a story name. It all depends on how you're saying it. So if, let's say if we have uh, the dastardly villainly comes in a jar. See, all depends on how you say it. You could have the uh, maybe uh, the the thoughtful and considerate Ramsey in the jar. See, it can go any way. Or, or you can have maybe you know the the important and perhaps slightly portly. Ramsey Najjar. See, all depends on how you said. Your name can go anyway. So I love your name, man. I love your name. <laughs> I am a nobody in somebody. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But uh, yeah, we love you, Ramsey, and I love your name. I just feel like your name can go anywhere with anything. Ramsey Najjar. It just has, some, has a ring to it. So Michaelis here as well. This is wonderful. And hello, Kathy. So uh, Kathy, uh, also please jump in. Uh, share, you know, give comments, give feedback. So uh, I love that you said hello, Kathy. This is a big deal. It's very important, right? So uh, just just since Kathy is, uh, well, I don't know if you watched or listened to them before, uh, but you know, uh, inclusivity is a massive big deal for us. Cut me out. Right, we are very, very inclusive. So we do like the comments, we make a big point on that. Go ahead, jump in. Sure, were you saying yeah for us or yeah for something else? Right. We don't know. <laughs> sure, sometimes there's external things that she's responding to. All right, so uh, 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 I mentioned in the start of this, I have a couple topics that Yes, these are go-overs, the weekday one was shared on Sunday, where we're doing the story and we, we reread it, we do capital R readings, we go in detail. But also we'll, we'll use this as a platform, as an opportunity, because it's a communal activity. And because we are sharing to say, you know what, this is on my mind, I want to share something. And I have something on my mind. Now you say, how does it connect to the story? Well, what's the, what's the chapter about? It's one concept, right? And that one concept we've already determined is appropriate. So I'm sharing what is appropriate and this, everyone's here is free to do so. And I want to share on this topic of, and it, it relates to my nobody comment. And actually the two came independently, which is rather interesting. And, and as a nobody, I might say, it's really interesting to me that what I'm about to share has came independently of this nobody thing, you know, just, it was just a fun joke that I was going to share, but a joke that has laidness and wants to it. But as a nobody, I say, what can I do? How do I matter? How can I matter? Well, as a nobody, there's sort of the assumption that I don't matter. Uh, however, this is the topic, right? So I've, I've shared before uh, in, in a detailed, in a post where, what can I do? I said, I can share, I can put out things that maybe make, but forget that. So, all right, how can I matter? How can I matter in the world? So I'm have to do a little bit of foundation laying here, right? Now, whether or not whether or not my personal belief here is true or not, it doesn't matter. I use it to leverage myself. So I take on this understanding and belief as a foundation for how I can matter. That the way the universe works is that the universe is trying to become aware. This is its task. This is what it's trying to do. 
And we, each and every one of us, are like a scientist saying, let me run these test experiments here, right? I don't know what it needs to become more aware, but I'm going to use awareness and give every opportunity for awareness to run in every possible variation that it can. And I learn from that. Wow, 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 wow. That's kind of a cool idea. Uh, of course, I don't know if it's true or not, but it could be, and it's very plausible and that sort of makes sense. It fits, right? So I see you nodding, John. I, I love this, right? So it, it, it clicks. We don't know that it's true. However, taking it to be true, assuming it to be true, behaving as if it's true gives me some value because now I think this through and I go further and I take it to the end and I say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, how can I matter? Well, you know, I have my issues and my stuff to, to, to deal with and my challenges of awareness. Uh, wow, wow. I look around and since this is a big focus for me, paying attention to coming to awareness, the challenges of awareness, I, I look at others and I say, wow, you know, everybody's got their own stuff to deal with. Now, there's another word for stuff here, but I won't use it because I try not to swear. Huh? Well, at least with Bina's here, because Bina doesn't, and it's too, too brilliant and, and beautiful, and I use it as motivation. So, uh, so dealing with my S stuff, right? Uh, this is particular to me. Uh, Bina's got her stuff. sher has got her stuff. John's got his stuff. Everybody, right? Ramsey, uh, Kathy, uh, right? All, all of us, we have our stuff, right? Now, in this, I, I say, man, why do I have my particular issues? And this came up with others, and it's, and it's so often we have things that are connected to our generational cycle, as that's the common word now, right? So, wow, a generational cycle. Doesn't this imply that this stuff has been coming up before? and it's coming back again. In other words, it was never resolved before. So, well, I've got to now deal with this, yes? So that, that's one thing, uh, that's one thing. Uh, uh, John jumps in and says, a basic problem is the idea of isolated individuality, an idea, yes. So I'm gonna get there, John, uh, exactly, exactly. Now, now, so, so stick with me, stick with me. We're getting there, we're on the right thing. So now I say, wow, you know, when I look at this, that I have issues to deal with, but maybe these issues aren't just for me and me alone, because this concept of, of, of the generational cycle implies that I'm dealing with issues that those before me did not deal with. Yes. So now I say, oh, in, if I connect that with the understanding that the universe is using us in order to follow these different parts of awareness to figure it out. Oh, oh, if I deal with my stuff, I deal with my stuff, I am resolving something that the universe has been trying to resolve for I, since they dot on my line, right? And since I'm six degrees of separation with every single individual in the whole entire world and universe, right? That's it. You can link with anybody six times right so that means that i'm really solving a collective problem so if i succeed in the challenges of dealing with my personal particular individual challenges i make a difference to the collective consciousness therefore i matter whatever it is and i'm not being asked to to, to have some major philosophical treatise or uh, put out some profound work. No, I'm just being asked to deal with my crap, right? My uh, frustrations, my annoyance, my pettiness at being irritated. Well, is this not something that's very common for people? You say, well, yeah, it is. Well, see, see the problem, it's common. Therefore, it's not being resolved. So me resolving it in whichever way I do it, adds to this understand oh it can be done and the fact that it can be done we start to shift we start to shift right so this is a huge 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 issue i want to add one extra point on here because it came up in in um 
Uh, no problem, Ramsey. I'm thrilled you you were here. I, I'm thrilled you were here. Uh, so please do watch later. I want to hear your perspectives on this, Ramsey. Uh, I'm very keen. So I'm just thrilled that you came and said hi. It matters tremendously. It's a huge big deal. So very cool, Ramsey. So yeah, please watch later if you can. I uh, want to just in closing of my little presentation here, because I'm sort of sharing something and then we'll chat about it. I just want to add one last point that sort of wraps this up. I personally feel the hundredth monkey issue is not an issue of numbers. It's not that, yes, it happened to be at the hundredth point, but the, 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 and it may be or may not be significant, but I feel the true significance is that that particular monkey was engaged in an activity which was a paradigm shifting activity. That's the significance. That's the significance. And that's how we matter. When I deal with my personal stuff and figure it out and resolve, in other words, when I actually deliberately and consciously evolve, I further awareness. And through this connection to the universe, it comes back down again. And I move the ball, the circle, the cycle of uh, awareness for everyone, just that tiny little bit. And that matters. That matters. And because it's a paradigm shift when we actually solve a problem that is a worldwide universal humanity sentience problem. It's not just for us, it's for all sentience. Yeah. So when we evolve in this way, when we truly, truly, truly resolve these personal issues, we actually advance sentience. We advance awareness because we're doing so deliberately, right? We're not evolving randomly. No, it's deliberate evolution, which shifts and changes the paradigm ever so slightly. We might not jump into a new paradigm, but we are moving the paradigm ever so slowly because the paradigm says, well, we, people have been doing this for thousands and ten thousands and millions of years, however long, right? And so it's accepted as the South done. So nobody really solves it when we truly resolve it we shift things so brilliant yes please be now please be in a share right so it's a very big deal this that i'm sharing right how i personally can matter by doing the stuff that i sort of i guess struggle with my personal issues right very key very good. please go ahead please go ahead Bina. so i was just keen to uh, to share what uh, john has shared in the comment have you checked that in the chat okay uh, oh oh john uh, john uh, uh, i don't know if you can but if you can do it pull up uh, try and uh, have your zoom uh, screen make it smaller and then have facebook underneath so that you can see the 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 comments on the on the live chat and then drop your comments there because you're putting your comments in Zoom chat, but the people that are in in the group on Facebook, you know, like Ramsey and and Michaela and and yes. Kathy, they won't see your comments. Yes. We, we'll okay. see them, but they won't. So, so yes. read, read read John's comment, please, Bina. Okay, Elizabeth here uh, too. Ah, brilliant. Hello, hello, okay. Elizabeth. Good morning. So John Elizabeth. says Good that. Morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, John says that a basic problem is the idea of isolated individuality, an idea that all experience rejects. We are blend of intersubjectivity. Exactly, exactly. And I addressed that. That's what I was saying. Uh, so in, in other words, look at my background, right? This is how we are as individuals. We connected to uh, all other individuals and individuals around us, much like our brain neurons, right? This might as well be a picture of our brain, right? Now, of course, you are going to be a little more connected to those that are closer to you and less connected to those further away. However, we are still connected to all, right? And, and this is what I was saying. If we resolve our problem, uh, that goes out into this connected network because it's something that is important and because it matters, it gets spread, it gets carried over, it starts to perpetuate, right? So we, when we solve our individual problems, and I want to emphasize this, we're not solving somebody else's problem. No, we're solving ours. Why? Because our problem is because we have that particular blind spot and it's learning how to deal with that blind spot that's the issue. When I look at your issues, I can see it very easily because I can see from the outside. But that doesn't help you because you still have that blind spot. So us dealing with our individual problems is the issue. 
Furthermore, I can't solve your problems for you. I mean, technically that might even be possible, but if I do, I rob you of the opportunity of doing so yourself and thus mattering and making a difference and having true, true real learning. Only when we resolve for ourselves do we get that true learning and that true increase in awareness. And that's what matters, that increase in real awareness. Our individual jump in awareness, it, no matter how small, adds to the overall uh, increase of awareness of everybody because we're all linked. Yes? So this is a profound, profound, profound thing. Yeah, It's a very, very, very big deal. Yeah. So this is this is a massive, 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 massive issue. And it's very important to understand. Now, does that mean we cannot be of assistance to each other? Of course we can. But there's one thing to say, I'm going to build your house for you. And another thing to say, yeah, the tools build your own house. I can help you build your house, but you still have to be the principal factor involved. But again, it's not even help because help tends to be that, you know, we're doing it and together, but assist. You doing it, I'm assisting you. You have to be the one to do it. Yes, yeah, so we can provide tools, we can provide insights, we can provide stimulation, you know, uh, all of this stuff, energy. Um, but in the bottom line, you've got to do it for yourself, right? Very, very key. Uh, Ramsey says, when you start to build yourself with one brick and keep adding more bricks every day, you become with time an exceptional building that does not look like the bricks, although it is made of fragments. Precisely, precisely, exactly, exactly. And also when we start, we don't necessarily know where it's going to end. Anybody who writes knows this. Yes, right, sir? We got the, all, we got the idea in our head. Uh, man, I've, I've got it figured out. I've like got all the things that I'm like rehearsed. I start writing, all goes away. Well, more or less. It comes back more or less, but it's never ever the same. It's never ever the same. And then you start writing and you think you know where you're going to end up, right, John? You have some clue, but you don't know where you end up is someplace different to where you think you were going. It's too fantastic. It's too fantastic. And you know, when it comes to writing, I can truly say, I mean, I apply this to my life, but I can truly say, I never know where I'm going, but I always get there. Right? I never know where I'm going, but always get there so when we have this trust in our ability to just follow and let things develop and build same thing with a building of ourselves i don't know where i'm going but i know i'm going to get there wherever there is there will be appropriate yeah yeah exactly Trans transcendental consciousness yeah now again how we refine this and define it there's many words for this collective consciousness that and the other it doesn't matter to me in the end of the day what matters is that that I now have a leveraging mechanism, right? Let's assume this isn't true what I said. All my ideas and beliefs aren't true. I'm going to take them as if they are. Why? Because it leverages me to work on myself. If I feel that me resolving my personal issues matters to the world, I'm a bit more leveraged. I'm a bit more motivated to actually do this. I'm squeezed, right? Sure. I'm squeezing myself to use an alternative for motivation. I'm squeezing myself in order to actually get off my backside and actually do something, right? Because otherwise I'm like, yeah, right, so what if I don't evolve? So what if I don't take care of myself? Because well, it's a big deal, it's a hassle, it's a lot to do, it's complicated, it's difficult, and I'm so stupid and blah, blah, and I'm a nobody, see? So now saying, well, you may be a nobody, but you matter. What you do matters. What you do can matter, right? And we want to matter. We want to matter, yes? And uh, this is a big deal, especially for men, because, you know, men are for the most part superfluous. Right, John? This is just a reality. We're superfluous, you know? We don't need all the men in the world. We need all the women, yeah, but we don't need all the men. So it's just one of those realities that we don't consciously think of, but it does affect, which is why you see young men are so bent on doing something that matters, that changes the world, that affects it, right? Uh, it's a big deal to them because they know they're superfluous, right? But this is how young men, especially, you can make a difference. You know, women know they can make a difference through having babies, right? Um, but many women, especially nowadays, they want they want to truly matter in ways other than simple reproduction. Yeah, 
so this is a very big, uh, I mentioned this thing about reproduction um, because it's in our DNA and this point of wanting to matter is in our DNA too. So this is a big deal. Kathy says, brilliant. The belief is when you heal yourself, you heal the past and the future of your lineage. Yes, exactly. When you heal yourself, you help to heal the world. Exactly, Kathy. What, what do we do to heal? Ah, what do we do to heal? Sorry, my eyes weren't reading nicely there. What do we do to heal? It is our trauma or wounds we receive usually from the womb, through puberty, sometimes even past life traumas. Helping us ourselves is the greatest thing we can do for ourselves our family others and our planet and to add to that kathy uh yeah to add to that not just our planet but also for awareness itself capital a awareness and, and in this understanding awareness capital a or even all caps awareness is something that exists independently of everything right so we've got us we've got our own individual awarenesses but it's like we're tapping into this greater awareness that has its own momentum its own continuity and we keep contributing to that yeah so this is a massively powerful thing and that's how we matter if we do what our lineage thousands and hundreds and who knows how many people have not done to deal with simple things like for instance the default of when somebody does something that we get irritated whether they did something that's actually irritating or not doesn't matter we just do it by fault well, well that's just what everybody does you know i don't know they they did whatever the thing is right we assume these things are the norm and they don't need to be right we can choose we can choose so this is very cool kathy this is very cool exactly exactly that's a lovely repeat back just by the way there you know we like to repeat backs and takeaways and what you said is a very very cool repeat back saying the same thing but in your own words that's what the repeat back is and and so, it has great value it has great value Bina. okay so what you are saying that okay sometimes we assume we get this idea that we have to feel irritated we have to do this like it's such it's a should thing but yeah. uh, these are also uh, uh, the limited uh, learned expressions we have okay sometimes we don't know that how to respond to that okay yeah, yeah. If, if things are just getting messy so we go to by default just to save energy because okay now i'm feeling a stress about something something is bothering me and now i need to figure exactly. out how to respond and express my stress appropriately then it is going to be like take forever so uh, this exactly. is exactly yes change the defaults hmm. yeah so it's not about how to deal with my stress appropriately it's how to not be stressed in the first place change the paradigm okay. say again okay so yes uh right. but right, if this if the situation is stressful for you what about that Learn not to ever be stressed. That's what I'm saying. All right, uh, 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 I have to. I have to go in a second. You muted yourself. Anyway, no problem. Uh, Sil will come back. So, uh, John, what do you think about this? That sometimes you just feel stressed because of situation. You're muted. Uh, you mean yes. about the idea of the um, helping yourself, but also being connected, or? Hmm. Yes, because uh, what Sil is saying that, okay, sometimes we just, uh, we express ourselves uh, like, okay, because of should. So yes, it is because of should, because this is what we know. We don't have any other way of expressing ourselves. It's a limitation of language and expression, like or limitations of communication in your words. Yeah. So uh, how to actually say that? How to actually express ourselves appropriately when we don't have that? Like, okay, the situation is not so pleasant. And I, I have this thing, this energy is building up inside me. How to express that? Well, I, I think it's important, you know, there's this balance between accepting yourself, but also wanting to expand yourself or to grow, you know. And so I think when we grow, then other people who, um, you know, who we interact with will see that and will be inspired, for example, or Mm -hmm. um, we'll learn lessons from how you're what you're working on and so I think that 
you know, there is an interplay that, you know, that I will see somebody else doing something and that inspires me and I might inspire them. Um, yes. And so I think, you know, this is, you know, this is who we need to be and, and it's who we are. Even when we don't think that's what's happening, it, it mm. really is. Yes. Okay. What do you think? Yes. Uh, and share, what do you think about it? <laughs> okay. no, uh, you know, I, I, I need, I'm just going to say I need some more information and more conversation to hear from, from you guys on this. Um, okay. okay. Because honestly, I was asking I, a I, question. Okay. Actually, yeah, I, I was asked not kind of have question. any kind of answer to that okay. question. Okay. I'll ask it again, please, Bina, because I had to deal with Amazon, so uh, yes, I, I must no have there. So no, in the meantime, again. we got value from John, and I asked him, and he says that, okay, this is the behavior of course. Ask what? To ask what? inspire others. Yes, okay. I asked him the, the same question that when, when the situation is stressful, okay, in the ah. norms, and we don't have any other alternative or replacement way of communicating that stress to let it out appropriately because it is too energy consuming to, to figure out something. And it, I'm just talking yeah. about on behalf of people who have no, not much awareness of way of impactability or any other way, yeah. of course, yeah. not only the yeah. way of impactability, yeah. but any other way to deal with all those types of, uh, type of situation. Yeah. 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 So like a common person, like anyone, including myself, when we are in a stressful situation, and as according to you, we should not go to the default. So this well, is not should, that, but it's helpful to, to yes. see if we can change the default. Exactly. Yes. So exactly. this is what I was just asking. And Bye. I asked John, and he, exp Bye. he explained it again in, a, in a different Bye. way. Bye. I asked Cheryl. And, 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 and this is a profound point to say, when I'm dealing with a problem, typically I look at the range of options around me, right? and I pick the, the best option. But the hmm. best option is sometimes actually the least worst option, right? It's the same thing. The best and the least worst is the same thing. But hmm. we assume that this is a viable option. But okay, so you know, my, when something stressful comes along, I can be traumatized or I can be mildly irritated. That's the sort of range, right? Or I can, you know, completely check out, you know, be, be eliminated by it. There's a whole range of options. But even mildly mm. irritated is not a positive option. It's just the least worst option. Yeah. See? So when mm. we say this this point of saying, let me shift. One thing I've got to remember, one thing I've got to know, one thing I've got to bring into my awareness is wait a second. I can question the defaults. This is life changing. This is everything changing. This is a profound shift to say, whoa, whoa, those are not my only options those are simply the options that are the defaults that i'm that are out there okay. but i can create invent imagine a new option that's when we advance awareness yes when we create those new alternative options this is such a profound thing i cannot emphasize it enough which is why this whole project of my life lives, the reading of the book. It's not about the story, especially. Yes, the story is fun and has value, but it's about demonstrating, showing, applying, practicing this alternative paradigm that we are in, which is the way we interact and communicate. We're not trying to compete with each other, for one thing. Are any of you competing with me or with Sher or with Bina or with John? Oh, yes, we are doing that. It's stupid. <laughs> it's, an, it's an idiotic question to say. Well, so exactly. what the hell are you talking about? But, but, <laughs> but, but, but I do know other places where you come on a Zoom like this or you come on a show where there is this competition. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it just was part of the paradigm, but it's not here. Secondly, I can say something stupid here. I can, I can make a feeble joke about nobodies. Okay. It wasn't that feeble, but, you know, or about butter or whatever, right? I can be an idiot here. I can be an inka poop. It's not a problem, right? I mean, when I when I talk my joke to Bina, or you know, it's like, man, you know, sometimes the jokes completely and utterly flop. So bloody what? Am I care about it? No. You know, on some other place, oh my god, that's terrible. You know, the poor producer's gonna have a heart attack. You know, and like, man, you no, that's fine. Can I stumble? Can I be awkward? Can I repeat? Oh, will what do you mean? Can I repeat? You know, in in some other, there's no way you can repeat the same thing over and over and over again, right? I mean, 
we can hear, right? And this is, it's encouraged because now I, you said something profound. So, well, wait a second, I didn't quite get this. And I repeat it back so that I get it. See, different paradigm, different paradigm, different paradigm. So, all right, Ramsey, okay, so see, see you later, mate. See you later, mate. And Norma's here, Norma's here. Ah, brilliant, Norma, Norma, Norma's here. All right, so I just want to say hello to Norma. It's very cool, very cool. Hello, good morning, Norma. Okay. Good morning, good yes. morning to you. Wonderful, wonderful. Keep going, keep going. And, okay. and, and we can, yes, we can, so, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, just to break out defaults, we can use alternative greetings. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this is a yes. big deal to me. Sorry. Go ahead, it's, go ahead, okay. Go ahead. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but uh, my question was that, okay, yes, when you were saying, okay, we can create new uh, ways, new, we can create new defaults, okay, or we can create our own options uh, when things are not really uh, obvious. Is it also include that, okay, just thinking from the other's perspective, like, okay, yes, uh, like in, in, in a situation I was in, I was expecting some logic for some, from some software designer to design that app in a sensible way, mm. but it doesn't, okay. And uh, I was going into all the logical, obvious options, like, okay, it has to be there right in front of me. This is how things should be. Yeah, yeah, a link yeah. should work for that purpose, but nothing was working the way it should meant to be at least. So, um, Yes, uh, today when we were practicing, I was thinking, so how to have this ability to think illogical from that person's side? Like, there you go. <laughs> how does it make a logical sense to put something really or uh, like mostly needed in that particular app in a, some like really hidden corner? Where What's the point to do that? But they do. Okay. And uh, so I was thinking like, uh, we need to yeah. have this ability. Yeah. Think yeah. like that person, even if they are stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know, Norma. I was just all involved in saying this. So I, I was a little slow to say hello. So I love that you, yeah, Norma. I do, I do. You matter. You matter, Norma. You really, really matter, especially to me, very much so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Are you coming back to, to Zoom or not? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I am sorry, 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 sorry. Someone just messaged me with something there. All right. Uh, so, uh, Abina, what, what yes. you were saying in this, how can I shift my default reactivity to uh, things that should make sense, not making sense, if I abstract yes. your question? Yes? Yes. Yes. All right, so let's be really, really, really radically, 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 profoundly, radically jump out of this paradigm shifting. And I say, well, I'm going to go all the way now. I'm not even going to go to just like kind of sort of the next little bubble layer up the next context. No, I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to say, well, wait a second. I am going to, I, I want to deal with this from a new nobility perspective. How would Biela deal with this? In other words, since this is our theme, right? I say, how would Biela deal with this? How would the new nobility deal with it? First of all, they'll say, but wait a second. Everything makes sense, capital M, capital S. Actually, we even go further. We have this all caps make sense. Like we said, all caps awareness, right? So, so wait a second. Now I've got to insist that this is making sense somehow. I have to reverse engineer how that makes sense. Yeah, dang. Well, it makes sense in the context of uh, when I also connected to awareness. I am being pressed to be aware in a different way. Well, very obviously, I expected and assumed that something that's a professional product made by professional developers would make sense. Yes. Right there, the universe is smacking me on the head and saying, mm, this is a valid assumption. No. Secondly, I'm saying, what else is am I being forced to do here by the universe? And forced is in, in, in inverted commas here. It's a, it's a nice force. It's not, not a truly force, right? Uh, I, I'm being forced to shift my perspectives on things. I'm being forced to think differently. I'm being forced to break pattern. Ah, man, what a, what a gift from the universe. Thank you, universe. Uh, already I'm excited. Already I'm excited because by going by my defaults, by my patterns, I keep <laughs> looping in the same old, same old. And mm. I don't grow. I don't evolve yes and i get stuck and well i get back to that frustration and stress but now instead of me being frustrated at these uh, uh, 
whatever the thing was. I'm now seeing it as a gift, as a gift for me to be creative, as a gift for me to jump out of this default of assumption, as a gift for me to jump out of my default of reaction. Never mind my default of assumption. We all know not to make asses of ourselves by assumption, assuming. But do we, do we truly know that we also make asses of ourselves by also doing the same things over and over and over again? Ah, so creativity, perspective shifting, uh, being open to alternatives, and particularly being open to seeing the events from a different perspective of the motivation of why they are happening to me. Are they happening to me to frustrate me and, and stress me? Or are they happening to me to shift my awareness? If I see this incident as a gift from the universe, holy moly, this is exciting. This is profound. Man, now suddenly I'm living in a world where when nonsense happens, it's actually a beautiful, profound, awesome thing. It's not stressful mm -hmm. anymore. It is magical. So now suddenly I've eliminated all stress in a way, right? Okay. Because so I'm going to insist I... on dealing with it differently. Yeah. Yes. Sure, you're nodding. Sure, you're nodding. Please share. Please share. <laughs> Sorry, Bina. Sorry to interrupt you, Bina. I, I, I want to hear from Sher because I know as a fact this has happened to show over and over and over again right so he, he, well i don't want to uh i don't want to brag or anything but yeah every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah every okay. day um yes i know because let me see i default automatically to my reaction is impatience um, you know, hurry up, hurry up. I want to get this done. I don't have time for this, this kind of thing. But then I get hit with a, something else that's going to make things stall. Like yesterday, we were out of power for some time. That kind of put a whole lot of damper on a whole lot of things that I had planned for the day. And then other things shifted. Everything over the last, I'm going to say, 72 hours keeps telling me, practice your patience. Just be patient. Okay, so I'm sitting and I'm being patient and waiting because whatever it is I'm supposed to be receiving will be coming soon, I hope. So it happens. Um, and as yes. soon as and as soon as as soon as I remember that, okay, this isn't happening to me, um, it's for me. I'll be yes, yes, time it yes. Comes back to patience. Yes. Time. And at my age, you think I would have learned patience? Mm. Yeah. I've yeah. learned it. Yeah. Just not practicing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, so exactly. Uh, exactly. Just, it's so just cute. Just so something. cute. Yes. Because um, personally, I don't feel, uh, I don't get into that mood of stress usually. Like, it's not my thing. I don't get into, like, okay, yes, I'm going to just. Uh, start cursing myself or cursing things this is not me but i do get stressed my stress is not like the, the other people it's like okay yes i'm quiet i'm just okay now i'm just doing this again okay now i'm doing this again but of course there is a certain limitation for me it's not like I'm, i have a ridiculous patience uh, like cell so at some point uh, i will just say okay no no more. i'm not going to just deal with this situation anymore and next time, what I'm doing is like a, like a mechanism, defense mechanism that I'm going to try to ah, avoid. Excuse me one training. second. Yes, no problem. So the, I was asking these questions on behalf of, of course, so many other people also, that it's, it's a limitation, of course, of our own uh, patience and energy also. When we are having a low energy, then it's really, it gets really difficult to deal with these type of irritating things. I always, I just love this analogy of a warrior who is all wearing the whole armor and having a sword and a shield in his hand, but uh, actually he, he doesn't need to deal with the enemy in front of him, but to deal with thousands of ends. Just imagine that situation. Your sword is not going to work on ends. Your shield is not going to work on end. Your armor is not going to protect you from it. All you're just going to beat, start beating yourself. Because these tiny little things, which doesn't seem like, okay, oh, it's not a big deal. But when they accumulate and they become like, like really a gang of ants, 
then you feel irritated then you become actually just powerless in front of them you have to do you have to throw your sword you have to throw your shield you have to take off your armor and then get done, get done with all those things so this is how these tiny little things and stresses in life actually works you are you can be a superhero in life like for the bigger things but these tiny things can actually stress you out that's why i was asking those questions about like how to deal with those stress because it's not of course limited to me but for other people we all are dealing with these sort of situation because a uh, few things in our life is dependent on uh, internet and technology mostly and technology is not uh, mostly designed by us and this situation makes us really irritated because our work our productivity our connectivity our communication depend entirely now dependent on technology but the technology is designed by someone else uh, who in uh, one of my really good friends words that they these people actually don't have real life they just spend their whole life in with computers so they don't understand the real value of communication and the need of communication the stable connectivity all they just of course they do try i'm not uh, uh, cursing their intent but the way regular people the way other people actually deal with with that connectivity issues it's not part of their world because they know everything so they just go there so they don't they cannot do this so i think we need to have testers really uh, people who are not very comfortable with technology when it comes to test new softwares when it comes to test new apps or something it has to be people who are who, who doesn't have time to spend whole days just to figure out one thing really this has to be tested like that because they are like really a gang of ants thousands of ants just attacked on you and you can't do anything <laughs> all your armor and shields and everything will be going completely wasted all your superpowers are going to be wasted <laughs> so all you need is just really thoroughness into that how to avoid them so preempting sometimes is the best uh, uh, strategy of course we cannot avoid technology we have to use it and we have to use it efficiently uh, but there are there should be some other ways also to deal with the stress and the issues of technology uh they seems like connected but they are actually two separate issues technology issues are real we all struggle with that because these things are not designed by us we don't have complete enough control but uh stress and being stressed is something it's on our own end. so now we have to deal with this situation that how to deal with unnecessary stress so the other cell will come back john what do you think about it so please share um yeah well i think a lot of it is um uh, uh from my own point of view because i've spent so much time traveling in different places and having different experiences you know that the whole idea of control really falls apart you know we when we're in a, a situation that seems to be static um that really isn't that static we really need to understand um how much uh how much we lose when we gain control you know it limits us within our own uh, our own uh, spectrum our own you know set of of capacities so when you're traveling especially in a new country with a new language and so on you don't even worry about control because you know you're not going to have much of it you know you can yes. sort of nudge things in the direction that you want but but yeah i think that the the more that we can um uh, just not just go with the flow but be the flow makes a huge yes. difference in exactly uh, you know in understanding and in working with stuff and then getting by you know what's possible and what is it possible which we don't know until we're in the middle of it anyway exactly and it it's a real struggle it's a very genuine real problem we all are dealing with because the more we are getting dependent on or the more we are getting value also from the uh, from the technology and from the internet especially and the softwares and apps uh, the more we are getting tangled up with all these things like okay now the, we have a very specified very specific very sophisticated apps designed for really sophisticated specialized task and to have this okay and they do that really wonderfully 
but to have this all these things together and like making a web and dealing with the web the more uh, we are getting uh, sophisticated in technology the more we are getting uh, we need to get sophisticated in the learning and of course the growing process also and to deal with the stress yes it is going to be <laughs> yes still you are muted Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, people coming across. So well, my neighbor just came across. So yeah, uh, no and just giving me something. So uh, sharing with the neighbor. Just too wonderful. Just too wonderful. It's too brilliant. Uh, Lisa, um, uh, Bina, did it make sense from the perspective of stupid end user testing? Yes, <laughs> yes. I, at least in now I understand what you mean. This, yes. Uh, again, my, my, my comment on the nobody, right? Uh, we do need to do this. We do need to do this to say, though, but let's change the paradigm again. Why assume that it's me as a default? It might be mostly me, but sometimes it's not me, as in the case of this incident that we brought up, where this is a, a, a well-used software worldwide, and they they have something that makes no sense, right? It doesn't work as they think it does, right? And, yes. and it should, it's supposed to, but it doesn't. So, uh, but if I get stuck in this idea of I'm the stupid one, I keep looking for a uh, um, the flaw in me that doesn't exist. And our minds are profound in their ability to be creative. If I insist I'm the stupid one, I'm going to create a whole legend around me. I'm going to recreate my entire world to justify this belief, this conviction that it's me. Yes. And this is a very devastating thing. And this happens over time. And it's very difficult to start unhooking from that, right? Because we've got this lifetime of accumulated distortions of reality. In other words, it's, it's confirmation bias used against ourselves. So we have to be very acutely aware and understand precisely this issue of uh, confirmation bias, which is why we get back to perspective shifting to multiple perspectives. One perspective says, uh, it's me, I'm stupid. All right, I know I've been stupid before. Yeah, that's, that's on the table, fine. Two, other people like me can also be stupid. And it is possible it even is. when things are professional and should be and supposed to be. I mean, look at our government at the very highest pinnacles of where you would expect sobriety, sensibility, thoughtfulness, overview, perspective, long-term thinking. You get the exact opposite. You get total indulgent, self-centered thinking. Please share. Right? Please share. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, saying? no, no, that was a hand oh. clap. I was, no, I wasn't. Oh, 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 I thought you, <laughs> okay. No, uh, yeah, no, I, I, no. I, I saw, yeah, no, all good, all good. So okay, this point that, right, the, the, so, so when we say our defaults here, multiple perspectives, yes, it may be me, but it's not necessarily me, and I'm not going to insist it's me. And that's really why I was saying to the nobodies, that the mindset, I'm a nobody and I'm stupid, this has got to go. Just because you're stupid, so what? Doesn't mean you can't figure things out. Doesn't mean you can't understand something. I tell you what, compared to you know the average robot, you can speak. You know how difficult it is to get robots to speak of their own accord? It takes massive amounts of intelligence to simply speak freely, right? So if you ever doubted that you're stupid, I can tell you definitively, if you can speak, you're not stupid. That's it. Guaranteed proof right there, right? So, but I'm saying though, to insist on this, it distorts your perspective and you end up conforming the whole world to make this thing true. And this is a power that we have that we have to be very careful of. Furthermore, why can't we assume that it makes sense and it's a gift? We can. And when we really do look at that as a gift of awareness, then the whole world changes. And suddenly we have this profoundly altered perspective that we live in a different world. So jump out of the paradigm. Things aren't there, and it doesn't matter if they're stupid or not. It all serves me. It all serves me. It doesn't matter if I were, whatever happens, I get value and usefulness out of it. How profound is that? Yes. This is ultimate appropriateness in action. Yes. Make sense? Lisa, does that make sense? I'm thrilled that you're here, by the way, Lisa. I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled that you're here. Oh, 
Oh, am I not seeing the? Oh, oh. Oh, sorry, I was typing a comment there and I never hit enter, but I think you said end user ten, uh, enter. I said, can you elaborate, please, Lisa? Uh, I'm not hearing anybody. Bina, are you there? This makes sense perspective. Hmm. It is shifting our appropriateness to this overall appropriateness. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Lisa. No, you asked if we were still here. I am. Um, oh, oh, good, good, good. All right. Yeah, John dropped off. John yeah. dropped off. That's all. I want to hear more from you, John, if you're still there or not. Uh, I never heard much from him, but while I was out uh, chatting to my neighbor, I, um, I, I heard this. So, so uh, um, Kathy, if you're still there, I'm keen to hear from you. Does this perspective of assuming or insisting even better than assuming, in other words, applying maximum capital or receptivity to say, let's work at it from the reverse. Let's first insist that it makes sense and work it backwards from there and see how it could possibly make sense. And when we do that, boy, do we get a, 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 a truly awakening and, 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 a, and a revelation yeah, to say, holy moly, holy moly, holy moly, holy moly. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So this is me, CJ. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, please, CJ. How do I find my own mornings? How do I find my own mornings? Wow. Yes, wow. Bina? I, 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 I want to give your, 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 your query, your earnest query. I want to give it absolute full consideration. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, not responding because I don't have a response for you. I want to simply make sure I, I give it my maximum response. So Bina, are you there? I'm keen to hear what Bina has to say on this. Okay, so to start, let's let's go let's go back to the thing that I very much sense said before that. Let's assume stuff or or take stuff for granted or even insist on stuff in the reverse. So, by asking that question, how can I find my mourners? There are a lot of implications there, right? In other words, it sort of implies that you got to go out and look for it. But let's reverse this. Let's say, wait a minute, CJ. What if you take for granted that you already have mourners. Oh, 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 well, well, that, that would then mean that I have the mourners, but I'm not aware of it, yes? So now it's a different question. Now it's how can I become aware of the mourners I already have? Mm. Mm. Which means this is a change of perspective towards yourself. Like I was saying about being stupid, right? If we insist it's always us, we create a world in which we, we, we are the stupid ones. But if we say, wait a second, I have mourners. I've just got to uncover that mourners. Yeah. Now, I, wow, I just got to start looking at it. So what in me might be considered mourners? Well, can you think, CJ? Yes. Can you ask questions? Yes. Can you ask questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you shift perspective? Yes. Look at things from different angles, right? Upside down, inside out, backwards, forwards, upside down. All uh, right. Yeah, you can yeah. do this. Yeah. All uh, right. Can you be persistent? Can you keep going with your thinking until you finish it? Yes. Uh, there you go. Question answered. What do you think mourners is? Uh, more like being more aware of yourself. Okay, that's a really good There you answer. go. That's there you go. Answer. Now, so so let me answer mourners in another way. Mourners is things uh, like 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 uh, uh, um, um, excitement, joy, um, profoundness, sublimeness, deep understanding, things like discernment, and of course, awareness, right? And, and it's not just any old awareness, because, hey, you know what, um, the, 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 the squirrel is aware, yeah, but there's a difference to its awareness and to truly really be thoughtfully aware and to be deliberately aware and to have skills of awareness, right? Like, for instance, discernment. 
Yeah, and, and perspective shifting. Perspective shifting is an awareness skill. It's a mourner skill because it enhances what we do. If we just take that whatever we see something and we take it at first glance, whatever it is, right? How do you trap an animal? Literally, how do you trap an animal? You put up something and they assume, well, it's just whatever it is, and, you know, it's just a, a string, a piece of wire, or like if, you, if you're going to trap birds, you know, you put a, one of those a plastic basin or some kind of a tub and something, you put a stick on it, you tie the string to the stick, right? And you put the seeds underneath. You done that or not, CJ? Mm -mm. You never did that to catch birds? Okay, well, or squirrels or whatever, right? So you just take something, you know, that's that, and then when you pull the little stick, the thing falls down on top of whatever's underneath, eating the food there. But when they come to it, they don't have perspective shifting. They don't have thoughtfulness. They don't have insight. They don't have the discernment. So all they see is something they just see a tub and a stick which aren't harmful they're not threatened because they don't have that they just take the surface impression but if they were but thoughtful it's like, hmm, implications hmm, implications right now all right they don't think that way it's why they get trapped now some animals do sometimes it's very hard to trap some animals right like crows very hard to trap crows and ravens uh very tricky right well i i i i understand lisa i'm using it as an example of how they can be trapped not that we want to, right? So it's all in the it's all in the motivation, right? So I'm not saying that we want to do this. I'm simply saying that we, in our own ways, can get trapped by looking at things only on the surface. So this is to answer this question of what is mourness, right? So we want to have discernment. We want to start looking at things via implication. Yes, like if I'm the animal here, this is the this is the implication that I'm in a world where my own thoughtlessness, my own unawareness, my own habits, my own reactions, my own defaults are trapping me. Yes, because I assume there are only one thing. But when I say, oh, there can be more, there's layers to it. This is where mourners comes in, that there's more to it than what I see on the surface. Yeah. So when I, for instance, get annoyed or irritated or angry, wow, is that the only way I can deal with this? No, I think this is the only way because that's my default. Yes. But there are other ways or in the reverse, I may be too, uh, I may be too accepting and I may be reacting to everything with, with happiness and positivity. And that may make, make me uh, too naive and I can get into trouble because of my naivety I can get taken advantage of right so we need to have all of these skills so the uh, the mourners is the ability to see what's underneath to see the rest of it to see the layer right like an iceberg you only see one ninth of the iceberg we want to see all of the iceberg so we are like icebergs we only think that we are that part that sticks out of the, the water at the top right but you're so much more than that make sense CJ yeah. Yeah. So the, the key is, you said, how can I find my mourners? We shifted that to say, how can I connect to my mourners? First of all, by insisting it is there. That's it. Insist it is there. It's already there. You just got to be aware of it. And like I said, if you can think, if you can speak, if you can figure out, if you can perspective shift, those are all mourners qualities. So you already acknowledge that you have mourners. If you can perspective shift, you have mourners. If you can think things through to the end, you have mourners. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's a mourner skill. You've just got to use it. So it's not so much about finding your mourners. It's about using your mourners. And, and, and. Let me ask you this, CJ, do you have to be the way you are now? No. There you go, mourners, see? That's a mourners answer. To understand that you have choice, this is mourners. Most think that they don't have choice. They just, well, I am what I am, and you just go along, right? No, to be in charge of yourself, to say, I determine who I am. That's a mourner's point. That's a mourner's understanding. That's you connecting to your mourners. Yeah? Choice, 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 choice. Yeah. Sorry for my example there, Lisa and Norma. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Elizabeth says she loves your question, CJ. Just absolutely loves your question. Yes, me Thank too, you. me too. 
me to. It's a profound question. It's a profound question. And see, just, just asking, just asking, just asking is already a mourner's activity. Look around you, CJ. Look around you. Look around you at people uh, that you know. It doesn't matter. Any age, doesn't matter. How many actually ask? I'm asking you. I'm, I'm, it's not a rhetorical question. I really want to know. How many actually ask truly, like capital A, ask like you did? What do you say, CJ? I didn't ask. I didn't want to look stupid, so I didn't ask. Right. But what does CJ say? How many people ask, CJ? I want to know from you. How many people ask? Well, I wouldn't know for sure. But not many, right? Yeah, you can't say exactly, but not many, yeah? At least in your experience. In my experience, people don't really, really ask. They just accept the way the world is and they think they know how it works and whatever they do, however they behave, yeah, they might want to change it a little bit, but they say, well, that's just kind of how things are. That's just how I am. And they sort of accept it, right? But they the don't really, anyway. exactly. The world does not work the way we think it does. The world is a magical place. Exactly. Exactly. So this is how you connect to your mourners by saying, hey, wait a second. Things work differently. I don't have to be the same. I can choose. I can change. I can make an effort. I can think. I can figure out. That's, that's how we get to our mourners, yeah. by simply making that effort, thinking and figuring it out. Please, please jump in. Lisa, I want to hear from you. Uh, Elizabeth, I want to hear too. How do you guys find your mourners? Or, or to change the question, because I want to uh, find means it's external or by implication, right? Yes. I want to shift this question. How do I uncover, become aware of, connect to my mourners? It, because mourners is inside me. Yes. And it's outside me too. It's all around me, right? So it's, it's both. So, so let's, change the, let's change the paradigm here, the question. How can I connect to my mourners? How can I use my mourners? Yes. Uh, what answer came to mind when you asked the question? Wow. 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 See, see, see what Lisa's doing here. Look at the sophistication here. He's yeah. saying, CJ, when you ask the question in the first place or, or, or ask it again and then listen to yourself inside, and say what answer came to you from yourself. Did you have one? For what? When you asked the question, or when it when it was when you were thinking of that question and waiting to ask it, did you have an answer for it from your your own interpretation? No, no, he didn't. Okay, so so well, but Lisa's saying though, if we start to listen when we ask a question. The moment before we asked the question, we didn't have any potential answers, potential answers. But sometimes when we ask in that moment, as I finish asking the question, it's like, oh, 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 and yes. stuff comes up in us. Right? That happens. That. So, so when we, especially when we ask earnest questions, pay attention to what comes up inside you. Yes. It's quite a, it's quite a marvelous thing. It's quite a marvelous. Sometimes we, we, we didn't think we had an answer. And then as I ask it, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes. I get it. I get it. I get it. It just, it's too fantastic. So a very, very profound point from Lisa. Well, very, very profound point. Please, um, please. CJ had the courage to ask that question where his Correct. grandma never did. No. I just waited yes. until I could try and no. figure it no. out for myself. And, you know, that was no. the hard way. Yeah. Um, so, will you read Elizabeth's question there, please? I have to just step away from the from the. Uh, oh, another question, a comment there about uh, her response to CJ's question. Uh, okay. So, yes, CJ. Uh, sorry, well, 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 I just want to comment on Sher's profound comment to say simply asking is a mourners. Yes, you already is. started on this path of connecting to your mourners, right? Yeah, uh, in point. other words, to start to say, "I don't know," Socrates. Yes. One of the you know all time great philosophers. Okay, I don't like to say that usually, but anyway, uh, you know Socrates was pretty cool, and he had he had a lot of going stuff. He said to to acknowledge our stupidity is the first step to wisdom. Yes, it seems contradictory, but that's it. So in the first step to our mourners is to just ask about mourners and say I don't know, and that that's profound. That is mourners to say I don't know, yes. and second step to mourners is to the ability 
to cultivate this ability to face and deal with the awful truth. The awful truth is that I'm an AL. Awful truth is I'm an income poop. The awful truth is I'm a knuckle dead. Awful truth is I don't know. I don't know. I don't know lots of stuff. And I, I'm saying this personally to myself now. I'm saying I, I feel this way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right? I know some things, but yeah, so what? Right. It's like saying I have some money. I've got a hundred dollars compared to trillions. So bloody what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I got a thousand dollars. So what? I got a million dollars. So what? Yeah, it's irrelevant. So when we acknowledge this true humility, this is the path to it, right? Now we can say, wow, 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 wow. How exciting it is that I don't know. Because the moment I acknowledged clearly that I don't know, I said, wow, I look around me. I don't know. What am I surrounded by? I'm surrounded by mourners. I'm surrounded by everything that I don't know. Now I'm all excited because, man, I don't know. And there's so much to know. There's so much I can know. But if I think I know, I don't see all this exciting possibility. And my life is basically screwed. Yes. Ah, so cool. So cool. All right, please, please. Or, 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 or CJ or, or Sir, please read Elizabeth's profound comment there. Okay. Um. I discovered, Elizabeth writes, I discovered mourness suddenly, long story in parentheses, like my eyes opened anew. It happened when I realized love is way bigger than I imagined or been told by anyone. Once I tapped into how much I am loved by the universe and learned to love myself, unconditionally and then it stopped oh wait okay that was part of the first sentence i i apologize i discovered mourness suddenly like my eyes opened anew it happened when i realized love is way bigger than i imagined or been told mm -hmm. by anyone mm -hmm. once i tapped into how much i am loved by the universe and loved learned to love myself unconditionally here, here, Wonderful. I agree with. Wonderful. Wonderful. That and, is and, and way bigger than what, what we think. What, what. <laughs> now, now, exactly. If we take this and we collect it to make sense, capital M, capital S, or even all caps make sense. Well, if I accept that the universe loves me, or God, or the fairy queen, whomever. or whomever, right? Doesn't right. matter. If I, if I accept this premise that I am being loved by something bigger and more than me, well, if I accept that that something has also got some sort of sensibility and good intent towards me, yes. right, I have to say, whoa, 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 wait a second. That means everything coming at me has to make sense. Yes. Because it has to. It has to. It has to, because we matter to the thing that loves us. Matter. Exactly. Now, exactly. So, so when you do things for Lou, that uh -huh. Lou doesn't understand, Lou being, being their, um, their canine, canine uh, uh, resident in their, in their house there, right? I don't want right. to call them your dog because, you know, no, I to can't. say somebody belongs to you, no. You yeah. live with Lou. But however, yeah. you do things sometimes that, that, well, you put a leash on to Lou when you go walking. That's right. for now, now, Lou doesn't like that leash. Yes, right. Precisely, precisely. You're doing it out of love and mourners, correct? Uh -huh. Because you don't want it to get in trouble, don't want to run away, whatever, right? So, but from Lou's point of view, she might not understand that. Yes, she doesn't. But if Lou did understand, right? But, but, but I'm just asking the question, right? From, from this point of view, that, that oh, stuff's happening to us that we don't get. And we strain against that leash. But if I right. stood, oh, this leash makes sense, I won't strain against it. My attitude, my, my stress, my botheration will change if I can click that it does make sense. The key is not this, the fact whether or not it makes sense. The trick is to figure out how. When we accept that we are being loved by mourners, that's my term. No mind universe, mourners, mourners, and the, the mourners of awareness. Everything that happens to us happens not just for a reason. No, happens for a good reason or, or somewhere along it, there's a good reason, right? So there's a gift in everything that happens that 
gift of awareness, that gift of something, that, that gift of love, something I need to know, something I need to shift. Some, uh, right? Everything is there for my benefit. And that's the magic of it. When we insist on this point that Elizabeth opens up, right? And that when we accept that we are being loved, we, we take that a little bit further. What are the implications? The implications are that everything that happens in and around me, my whole world, everything is there for my benefit. Therefore, it does make sense. It can only do this if I insist that I'm being loved. Yes, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, now you say, yeah, but how can I be loved? I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. I've done bad things. Yeah, that's a very valid point. That's if you think your love is conditional. If, if there is something more out there and moreness itself, wouldn't moreness have the mindset, the attitude, the ability to love you regardless of your idiocy, your stupidity, and your nincompoopery? Right. Ah, so, so, CJ, when you see a baby, CJ. when you see a baby, right? I mean, generally, people love babies, right? Why? Why do they love babies? Babies are stupid. They don't know anything. They're clueless. They're ignorant. They're unaware. They poop in their pants. They vomit all over the show. It's like, come on, what's to love? Yeah? <laughs> See my point? From the mourner's point of view, from the universe point of view, from the fairy queen's point of view, from the whatever's point of view, we are like those babies. Doesn't matter that we think we're stupid. Doesn't matter that we do idiotic stuff, you know, like poop in our pants or poop on all over the show, right? Uh, in other words, do things that aren't ideal. We're doing it because we're ignorant. We're ignorant. We don't know better. What we can learn to know better, yes? That's what we're doing now. It's a learning. big deal. It's a very big deal. Yes, magic, Elizabeth. Exactly. Uh, we're learning to shift our perspective. We're learning to unhook from what we think is the best. Go ahead, go ahead. Right. No, I, I was going to uh, I was going to say thank you to Elizabeth um, for cueing that in because I don't know. It just seems like it just kind of fell in with all of the um, <laughs> the the oh. ups and downs that we've had for the last seventy two hours here. So it oh, it worked. Oh, oh. It was perfect. Yeah, lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Norma, Norma, if you're still here, Norma, or I assume you're still here, I'm keen to hear from you, Norma. I'm keen to hear from you. Please give us your opinion. And you too, Lisa. I, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. I want to hear more. This is such a huge, profound point. And, and in, in the connection to our story, right? So I, I want to say just too, that this story from, from Biala's point of view, from the new nobility point of view, this is how they live. They live in this magic world where everything makes sense, where there's a moreness to everything, where there's value to be gleaned from everything. You just have to insist on finding that value, on extracting that value. Extracting. So they would say, so, so would they say something like, instead of, well, this doesn't make sense, they would ask, wait, let's figure out how this makes sense or how exactly. this Exactly. Okay. Always. Always, always. Okay. It's a default that everything makes sense. It's simply a how. Right. So, so they would say when something comes up, uh, so, so their default, they would say, uh, I'm not getting how this makes sense. Okay, wonderful. I got when it. When they come Yay. up to something that's confusing, it's like, hey, wait a second, I'm not getting how this, look at the implications. I'm not getting, I'm not understanding how this makes sense. The default is it makes sense. I'm just not figuring it out yet. Uh, uh, yet. Yes, and they would add that yet. I'm not getting how this makes sense yet. Always okay. the yet. And sometimes that's what they that's why they sit around and it's why they have this oral culture, it's why they interact and discuss, do what we're doing now. Because what we are doing now is figuring out how it all makes sense. This is okay. our task, this is our job, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Like uh, Elizabeth says, to to doing a repeat back. Right, like every single thing is designed for my own benefit or yours for learning and evolving. Exactly, exactly. Right. This is the point and purpose of everything. So we go back to wave impeccability. The meaning of life is, yeah, is. the development and enhancement of awareness. So wow, wow. Soldier said what the meaning of life is. 
Oh, you know, when I look on the internet, people say, oh, you can't figure out what the meaning of life is. Nobody can know this is impossible. It's Nonsense. There's plenty of people who will tell you what the meaning of life is. Exactly. Now, may or may that not be the meaning of life? I don't care. What I do care is, does this give me value? I get tremendous value. When I say, let me go and test this idea, this idea of this meaning of life, right? Okay, so I heard this, and so said, oh, the meaning of life is to develop and enhance awareness. Oh, let me go and test it. When I do test and check this, hey, CJ, I suddenly discover, holy moly, you know, everything that happens around me is there for me to develop and enhance my awareness. Everything, everything that happens. And I just have to figure out how. I just have to figure out how. And the more you start doing this, the more it starts to feed on itself and the more you realize this. It's very proud. We see you just fine, CJ. We see you just fine. We see you just fine. You, you're the right way, the right angle, everything. So we all Can see you. Notice we all see my you. eye. Um, a little bit. It, it's not something that I'm, you know, given to paying attention to now because we're doing the Zoom interaction here and then oh, the really live. So, you know, it's 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 a uh, it's not a particular focus right now. Let's put it that way. Bina, where'd you go? I haven't heard from you for a while. I haven't heard from you for a while. Bina, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, just to recap on this, right? We, we we're really dealing with a very profound um overview appropriateness right so we ask what is appropriate and cj you asked that question right and you i said how do i connect to how do i uncover how do i use my mourners this is one of the most appropriate questions we can ask yes so in other words how do i be more me how do i be real me because real me has mourners to it yes you might not believe it yet, but if you pay attention, it's there, right? I mean, like I said, just the fact that you can speak, CJ, that you can use language, you you like, um, I don't know how many iterations. You can go look it up. You can go and look it up. They will tell you, like, if you look into AI and robotics, where they're trying to get things to speak naturally, uh, the, the amount of processing power needed to do that. Is like we, we don't have enough computers to be able to get to do this yet, right? It's not possible. So the fact that you can do this, you already got mourners just from being able to speak. Yeah, simple. Just being able to use language. Yeah, it's mourners. So much, much mourners involved. Much, much mourners involved. Very, very profound. Very, very profound. Um, I still want to hear from Bina. I still want to hear from Bina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh anybody else too uh, um, lisa any thoughts on this norma any thoughts on this more elizabeth ramsey's left already so kathy please i'm very keen to hear from you again kathy it was so nice hearing from you uh you know this understanding where we've said all of a sudden we are changing our entire perspective on how life works and going forward as we continue reading the story when we read it through the lens that everything make sense in some way or another the the key is not whether or not it does make sense the key is whether or not i can figure out how it makes sense yeah does that make sense to everybody yeah it's me i've got to figure out how it makes sense and you know sometimes things may really seem ridiculous but it let's say for instance well, like this incident that, that Bina brought up, right? That software that's supposed to work properly doesn't work. How does it make sense? It forces me to think differently. It forces me to be patient. It forces me to be tolerant. It forces me to be insightful. Yes. It forces me to perspective shift, etc., etc. Right. So when we look at what I'm being forced to do in, in order to not feel stressed and bothered and upset, what am I being forced to do so that I'm not experiencing negative feelings and et cetera, right? See, so when, when I get, get nonsense from the internet, well, it's forcing me to be patient. It's forcing me to be tolerant. It's forcing me to not get stressed. It's forcing me to mood manage. It's forcing me to energy management, see? So this loving universe is pressing your button a little bit to say, hey, 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 hey wake up, do something, do something. You know, otherwise your choices are feel bad or learn. 
Can you can you say what I can you repeat for me what I just said, CJ, in your own words? Mm. Just that. Those no. two words that I said. Feel bad or learn? How would you say that differently? What does that mean to you? I don't know. What does that mean? What does that mean? No, just see if you can figure it out. You think it out. Don't, mm -hmm. don't ask her. You you think no, it I'm out. Saying you figure it out. He wants you to figure it out. Can you repeat it for him, please, so? Okay, so 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 the universe says to us, you got a choice, dude. You got a choice. You can either feel bad, crappy, horrible, stressed, bothered, whatever, up to feel negatively, or you can learn. That's it. Those are your choices. Make sense? So next time you you're getting stressed, bothered, feeling bad, you say, wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second. I'm not, I'm not going to fall into this habit of just automatically doing this like a robot. Eh, I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose to do things differently. In other words, I don't know what the hell to do. I've got no clue. That means i got to learn. When you yeah. don't know what to do, you look for what makes sense. And how to learn, exactly. To what learn. to learn. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't just accept feeling bad as normal. Right, remember I told you yesterday? Feelings yeah. are temporary. It's choices we make about those feelings based on. Yeah. That's what makes the difference. Yeah. 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 It's very profound. It's very profound. This understanding that if I simply say, I am refusing to accept feeling bad as normal. That's how I unhook from mourners. Because how can feeling bad be part of mourners? Doesn't make sense, right? Doesn't compute. Doesn't compute. Can't be. Can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be. Can't be. So I, I, I'm going to shift out of that. I'm going to say, no, if I'm feeling bad, I've got to jump, jump out of that. So I'm going to change. I'm going to change my defaults. I'm going to change my defaults. Yeah. Very profound. Yes. Very profound. Yes. In, in other words, and to, to recap again, I'm going to repeat this again and again and again and again. We're going to go over this theme that uh, this is what we are doing here. We're going to shift our paradigm. We're going to shift our defaults. We're going to shift our habits. We're going to ex a shift what we believe and accept as normal. Yes, mourners is by definition that what's not normal. Yeah, you asked what's mourners, right, CJ? Well, think of it as that which isn't normal. And I'm saying normal in inverted commas because the true normal is mourners. But the usual normal that we think of as normal, this is not mourners. This is a limitation. This is just a little bubble. So we're going to insist that we're going to not accept the usual, the normal, the default, the paradigm. Yeah, that's how we can shift into the thing, to do things differently. We're going to insist on this because if I'm not happy, then I'm not connecting to my mourners. It's as simple as that. Uh, if I'm not happy, I need to learn. Let me repeat that. If I'm not happy, I need to learn. Simple. If I'm not happy, I need to learn. If I'm stressed, I need to learn. If I'm bothered, I need to learn. If I'm angry, I need to learn. If I'm irritated, I need to learn. If I'm annoyed, I need to learn. If I'm confused, I need to learn. If I'm in doubt, I need to learn. Good. It's very simple. Very simple. And when we start to enjoy learning, because, man, learning empowers me. Learning gives me options. Learning, learning makes me feel better. Oh, I love learning because learning is how I connect to my mourners. That's how I find my mourners. That's how I connect to my mourners through learning. Learning, 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 learning. Learning is a joy. It's not a punishment. It's a joy. It's a joy. It's a joy. It's a skill. Not only is learning a skill, learning is a power. Yeah? That makes sense? Lisa, does that make sense? Norma, does that make sense? Elizabeth, does it make sense? Kathy, yes. does it make sense? Yes. Yes. Bina, are you back? Yes. Brilliant. Yes, it brilliant, does make brilliant, sense. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Definitely. Please share, 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 share Does anything. Hear? Share anything. I want to hear from you, Bean. I want to hear <laughs> from you on this paradigm shifting. Yes, hello there. Hello. We're having fun. We're being treated to two different. Now, you yes. see again what I was saying earlier. 
right? The environment that we have created on these lives and, and on our Zooms. We are open to variation. We are open to things being slightly different. We are open to the norm being, being challenged a bit. And we have patience, we have tolerance, we have the discipline, we have the forbearance if needed. And, and we have this openness to say, ah, things can be different, right? Not always the same. And we make allowance for it, it's okay. It's an opportunity to practice, not only for us, but for everybody. To practice being on Zoom, to practice sharing, to practice discussing, to practice asking questions, right? To practice contributing. However we think our contribution is, no matter what you do, it's a contribution of some kind. Uh, it all depends on the recipient, not on the giver. Yeah, yeah Bina? Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. this thing I was sharing when you were away that, okay, how these things can be and how to, uh, how to need to learn to deal with these type of situations. So uh, I think I, you were not here when I was sharing that analogy of a, of a warrior who is full, having full armor, having a sword and a shield in his hand and uh, all his skills are there. But instead of having, a, having an enemy in front of him, he's been attacked by thousands of ants. So now the sword is going to be like, okay, thrown away, shield also, the armor he will put, <laughs> put it off because he needs to deal with. So we need to understand the, the problem and the dynamics of the problem we are dealing with. Uh, it's yeah. not always appropriate to have a sword and a shield or a gun or everything, but okay, sometimes you need to yeah. learn to yeah. deal with those very peculiar situations, like the, uh, the, the, the problems or the uh, peculiarities of uh, technology we are dealing with. These are things we know the bigger picture, we know how to do our things. We are creative people, we can create, we can have resolution. Yeah. When it comes to deal with the, the nitty gritty of these technology and like okay, some nuance problems and something, these are the things which really test us. They really test yeah. our patience, they really test our thoroughness, they really test our, our ability to yeah. do the perspective shifting. Uh, I always exactly. ask uh, questions on behalf, of course, of uh, other people, like, okay, oh. what that could oh. be for a layman, what that uh, question can be. So that's why I was asking, because I don't know oh. why, but uh, oh. everyone oh. is comfortable to ask questions. Maybe I don't know why. Oh. For me, oh. questions are love letters oh. from the universe. Oh. If I oh. have a question, unresolved questions, uh, question, it means that universe is just providing me the opportunity to learn and grow. And universe have this trust on me that exactly. I can do exactly <laughs> exactly so instead of uh, so getting involved into the ego we can we can just enjoy this this having the question oh, yeah. i don't know I yeah this is yeah to learn. yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. so let's so get say, practical here right yes let's get practical i always like to get practical to say okay so so now i understand the value of looking to connect to my mourners and to connect to the mourners not of only my own mourners but the mourners of the world what can I do as a practical first start step, right? First thing I can do is, well, as many first things, it does not necessarily first because it's the most important, but let's just start with this one, perspective shifting. All right, so I understand perspective shifting is important to multiple perspectives. All right, let me apply that. So let me practice this. So let me now set the intent to from today onwards, I'm going to practice the skill of perspective shifting to multiple perspectives. So I look around me and I say, wow, right, exactly, to multiple and alternative perspectives. So I look around me and I say, I'm going to practice with everything that I do. So I say, well, you know what, I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a headset here. What would be an alternative perspective on a headset? Simple thing. This is now physical stuff. I'm not even talking about abstract things, just the physical set. Well, yes. they're also called <laughs> earphones. Right, right. Yeah, right. it's okay. Ear audio, sound audio, head. All right, well, it's not so much. It's just something that sits on my head that allows me to, to listen and hear, etc., etc. You see what I'm saying? I keep on going through this, right? And when you, when you really make an effort to do this, you start saying, Oh, you know, this is also convenience. See, now I'm going into abstract understanding. It's a different perspective. I was describing it literally. Okay, headset, earphones, ear audio, whatever. But if I look a little bit in the abstract, say, oh, it's convenience. It's usefulness. It's time saving. Also, like this one here, which is, you know, both of these are wireless or Bluetooth. It's freedom. It's option. Yes. 
See, see what I mean? Different perspectives. Oh, now I'm looking at my headset. Oh, it gives me freedom, gives me choice, gives me options. Whoa. Suddenly it's different. Suddenly this thing is not so simple anymore. Suddenly it's kind of a big deal, yes? Uh, it's also magic, is it not? Oh, yes. Uh, you go back 100 years and show this to your, your great, 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 great grandmother or grandfather. And they say, how did you get the little people inside there? You got fairies in there or what? See, magic to them. Yes. Yeah. yes. So yes. when we start to perspective shift, we really see the world differently. And we see the way, hey, wait a second, the world isn't the way I thought it was. It's a much, 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 much bigger, more marvelous, more magical world out there. So this perspective shifting to multiple, all caps, multiple, got to shout that multiple because it's crucial. I have a confession. Not to just make perspective here. shifting from A to B. Oh, uh, confession time. Uh, yes, child. Yeah. Mm, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the, the confession the is, out is there, they'll yeah. know what I say. Well, you remember when uh, you know myself and CJ and company we came mm. down and we did the perspective shifting session with yes, you, yes, right? the workshop, yes, yes, right. yes, in person. I was in, in, yes. really trying hard to grasp and understand, as you know, that I didn't fully no. understand everything no. you were no. imparting. No, and I, I, a lot of these. You know, conceptions I have tried and tried and tried to get a whole lot of them. And when Bina was talking, I think it was yesterday about how things might one day just click. Well, one just clicked. And it has to do with perspective shifting. Okay. I remember being very just steeped. I mean, it, it, grief was dripping off of me. I knew it was. And that makes me very angry and irritable and, mm. and you know, I'm, I just wasn't really, I was pleasant enough, but I was by and oh, large yeah. really edgy. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I do remember that, you know, you were, you, you tried to tell me a couple of times that it doesn't have to be this way. I don't have to feel yeah. this way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't, but I also couldn't get past that mind block or whatever it was of grief. Mm -hmm. So... It's an amazing thing that, you know, now that things yeah. are moving on and I can, I can connect with all of this, but I get it now how perspective shifting ties into mourners. So yes, there's yes. my confession. And, right. And, and also look at those moods and feelings that you had and, oh, yeah. and, and how, how they limited your ability to shift perspective and therefore perceive. Heavily. Heavily, because everything kept going back to the, exactly. the, the two favorite words. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah but it's this. But exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And so, in other words, those feelings, those beliefs that you had, mm -hmm. those beliefs, right? Yep. They limited your ability to perceive. Absolutely. And uh, is that not scary? Is that not or what? at least scary or at least like holy moly, holy moly, holy moly. Isn't that not like like just jump starting you to say, whoa, 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 wait a second. I don't I don't want my perception abilities limited. Exactly. Well, see, I don't want to be missing I mean, out. So, I, I don't understand what's been happening lately. I just know that the awareness is I, I've got no other word but to say acute. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just yeah, so yeah, yeah. fully aware of everything. Sometimes things come really, really fast. Right. Right. Um, the connections, everything is just clicking. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've got yeah. to always okay, I, I have to pace and, and uh, alter my day to make sure that uh, I'm not overwhelmed. But All right. So I've got, I've got an analogy for you as to how it works. It's got to do okay. with my, my, my background behind Your me. background? So, so uh, CJ, and, and sure, if you guys have a fluorescent light somewhere nearby, Okay. Uh, and, and then take a, a fluorescent bulb or a tube, yes, that's not, that's not connected, and hold it near the fluorescent light. Now, I don't know if this still happens today. Maybe they fixed this, but it used to be that with the fluorescent lights, I think it just had poor ballast or something, that you could take one that's not plugged in and hold it next to that fluorescent light, and it would light up. Wow. Do you know what I'm talking about? 
Well, anyway, no, yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Well, it's just because the way the thing works, it would they weren't very well made, and they had the ballast, the thing that right. put the energy in, would leak it, and it would would radiate. And anyway, so yes. the, the, this was really cool. So you add the light, and you put the next one next to it, and it makes it also light up. Now, imagine on my diagram behind me here mm -hmm. that this is what happens with awareness. That when you come with your awareness and you put it next to another awareness, the one awareness helps the other one to light up more and they feed off of each other yeah. and they light more. So now each time a little point gets lit up, right? What happens to the points that aren't lit up? The ones nearby start lighting up. Yes. What happens to the points near them? They start, they start lighting, lighting up. up. And you see, you see how it goes through. Now, yeah, now of course, it, it's all spread. At some point. At some point in this diagram behind me, there will be no blackness. All those lights will work together and this thing will become one great big shining ball like a sun. That'd be cool. In other words, what I'm trying to say is the more we understand individual understandings, truly, truly, truly get this one individual point, it starts to leak over to the points connecting it on your dictionary of power. All those points are points on your dictionary of power. So when we make that effort to think things through to the end and to perspective shift to multiple perspectives, that's when we light up that point of understanding. That's when mm -hmm. we truly, truly understand. And when we do this once, right? It only happens when we truly, truly get it. Then we light up that point. Now suddenly it starts to light up the points around it. And you've done this with many points, right? But as we go, lights up more points, lights up more points. Beliefs, up more especially. Points. Beliefs has been the one that kind of just kind of set it all off. So it was like the firecracker. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so Elizabeth says some, will you read, please, Elizabeth? I mean, uh, uh, sure. And then, uh, so the bulbs have some sort of brain. Uh, a no visual node in your brain is its own little mini brain. It's let me let, let's put it this way, right? You connect it to the internet on your computer. Your computer is a brain, but the internet is a brain comprised of many little brains, right? So if we take this picture as the internet, same thing, yeah. So the more you get each individual computer to be sensible, the more the internet becomes sensible. So that's how it works with our brain, right? So, so each each um, bulb is a point of comprehension. Each bulb is its own individual little computer, and we need to get this computer sorted out. No viruses. The viruses or what? Defaults. Right. Our default is a massive virus. Yeah. We want to clear out all the viruses and the nonsense, the pettiness of the ego, all of the stuff. Right. Uh, so when we start to get our computer sorted. It helps the internet in general, and this we need to do with each little individual point inside our brain. Yeah, yeah. So the bulbs do have their own brains, correct? Right. Each 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 bulb is is its own little computer. Yes. Uh, will you read Elizabeth's comment, please, sir? And yes. comment. Uh, Elizabeth entrusted. She writes, "I still deal with immense grief too, chair." Comes in waves now, not constant like before, but I can actually hold it, not turn from it, knowing its purpose, its origin, and its connectedness to all that is still unfolding. That's an extremely accurate depiction of, oh. of how we, how we, not how we are processing grief, but the process of walking through grief that yeah. you get to that point where yeah. you're, you're just like, okay, I've accepted it. I acknowledge it. And now I'm just going to let it be and live with it while the rest of my life unfolds. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah. um, when a wave of grief does come, it's very, very short now. It's almost just like a passing memory. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I had this thought. Yep, I used to be, you know, with this person. And then I continue on. It's like I don't skip a beat. I want to ask you both. Okay. Elizabeth, sure. Really asking very earnestly. Yeah. Elizabeth, sure. 
how does grief capital M makes sense? Capital S makes sense. I'm Especially this first... recurring coming back grief. Yes. Yeah, right. Back it doesn't make a lick of sense. But if we insist that it does, how would it make sense? What would it force you to learn? That it's okay to feel. What about if you keep getting this grief coming back because it's saying develop and acquire independence of being? Of being. Now it makes sense, yes? Yeah. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly it didn't make sense two seconds ago and now suddenly it makes sense. Right. See my point? We need to insist that things that come, that press on us, that we don't like, that make us feel uncomfortable. Oh. If we are ending up with a negative reaction of any kind, we say, okay. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Now your grief is saying, oh, it's pressuring me to develop independence of being, to be free from it, to accept that grief is a default that I have to have. I can feel grief, but I can also be joyful, et cetera, et cetera. Many things, right? Grief right. is a default standard. But if, if, if the person that you're loving, if they've transitioned and I have independence of being, am I not happy that they've transitioned to, a, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's all these defaults, many, many, many defaults involved in that. Let's think of it in another way around this, right? You think that your grief is something that you should feel, you're supposed to feel. If it was you on the other end, looking back, would you want those who loved you to feel grief when you've transitioned? I Me would personally, not want anybody to feel what I went through. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I would not want anybody to feel grief because I've transitioned. That would make me very miserable. Oh, so when you God, think of that, awesome. holy moly, I never thought so much sense that that uh, the universe is pressuring me to not feel grief right because i'm unhooking from supposed to the moment i start unhooking from supposed to it all changes yeah 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 it does. yeah very profound question very profound very profound again perspective shifting yeah perspective shifting perspective shifting yeah yeah Really profound, really, really, really profound. Bina, please share. Elizabeth also. Uh, uh, and now, now I, I want to just qualify what I said, right? I don't want to minimize grief and I don't also want to come across as being uncaring or unfeeling. Now, if we do the transition through change, which is the grief, dealing with grief, it's essentially a grief counseling course, right? I come at this point that I just shared, I come at it very slowly. Uh, build up into it. I, I use lots of things to get to that point, right? Because it's a bit of a radical point for some to jump to. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm doing it simply here because we, we are talking about mourners and it's contextually appropriate. But I just want to, yes, like Norma says, it depends a little on tradition precisely. We can change the tradition. Not all traditions grieve when people transition. Some celebrate it, right? So Oh, 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 what do you mean some celebrate it? Yes, absolutely. It's like you finally achieved, you're getting there, you've gotten to where you need to go. You, 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 you've learned enough so that you can transition. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, wow. In other words, it's perspective shifting at its most profound, right? To perspective shift to multiple perspectives on grief. Uh, if this is something that does press on you, please come and do the, the, the grief counseling transition through change. That's what it's called. It doesn't yeah. only apply to, 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 uh, to grief. It applies to any kind of loss, loss of a relationship, loss of a job, whatever. Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? Uh, we can do that together. I'll be more than happy to do that. And we can do it live or we can do it in private. doesn't matter either way. Right? Uh, but the key to it is to say that I don't have to accept the default that I'm supposed to and I should feel grief. And to me, that's the mourner's lesson. To say, I look from shoot, I look from shoot. You know, the universe keeps telling us this over and over and over and over again. I look from your habits. I look from your defaults. I look from your assumptions, especially assumptions of should. You are feeling grief because you think you should. Because isn't that what a good person does? They feel grief when their loved ones transition. See, it comes from your goodness. It comes from your goodness. It's a very profound thing. It's a 
very profound thing, but it's also a way of thinking, a way of believing, a way of feeling. And when we understand feeling and believing and how they work together, it all starts to work together, right? All starts to work together. Bina, please share, please share. My understanding of grief is, okay, first, it is not entirely connected or uh, limited to uh, some loved ones loss only. Uh, grief can vary, of course, can be multiple causes behind that. Yes. Also that um, grief is it's not just one feeling or one emotion. Mostly, mm. of course, it is connected to or associated with emotions and triggers itself. But uh, it has it is associated with multiple feelings involved to this. Uh, mm. And uh, and this is also not limited only in your mind. Uh, it is of course also connected with your your body because uh, it's physical also like all other emotions so uh, when to deal with uh, with grief mostly it happens that uh, when we get into that uh, grief uh, we need to go beyond or like uh, before when actually that loss happened or the reason happened why we are in grief uh, because uh, the attachment or the possessiveness or trying to control the situation or the person. Uh, mm. This is something we need to uh, remedy first because uh, I think personally feel that the real reason for having a grief is not only it did not happened in that particular incident when someone actually transitioned or something happened to us. It started way before that and we are uh, part of that too because uh, we were not aware that how to have relationship with anything, any perspective or anyone. Um, this is the, the sense of uh, the, the idea or the concept, the clarity of this idea or concept of uh, detachment, uh, we need to understand first, because it's not about this incident. It's, it's way before then, when we were having everything is good. Uh, and like, okay, yes, the person has not uh, transitioned yet, but does, uh, does that make sense to us that the type of relationship we were having, well, we need to go and uh, really in detail and see that. Do we have, do we have that like we can read right now, do we have a healthy relationship? And by a healthy relationship, like, okay, are we, are we just uh, possessing each other, trying to control, trying to just mm, <laughs> manipulate wow. each, other, each other? So uh, wow. because, uh, these feelings are also involved into this, uh, this grief because the sense of defeat, because uh, sense of losing mm. control, we were trying to, uh, and uh, wow. sense that um, the completely get things happening against the detachment concept or the attachment concept we have. So uh, wow. for me, grief, actually, uh, to deal with grief, we need to go back to the, in the history of where it actually started developing and what we are actually feeling. Once we understand that, how our relationship was with that person or thing or any situation, then we will understand that what we are calling grief is not just one feeling or emotion. It is a feeling or a sense of loss, sense of defeat, sense of losing wow. control, sense of feeling uh, betrayed. Why all these feelings were happening? Wow, Why all of those feeling? would be non-independence of being feelings. Exactly, exactly. And the second thing is that it has to be uh, remedy also physically uh, because uh, in those moments, actually uh, we become so vulnerable almost for us so those uh, the wow. atmosphere around us the situation the what people were saying how uh, how the temperature and everything we just absorb that so every single time when we get yeah. any trigger like oh the same type of wind then we get the wave back of grief again oh the same type of food or the aroma of that or same environment or something someone said that it brings back to the memory, yes, yeah. in, in yeah. our body again, and then we yeah. feel. And yeah. that makes yeah. them, uh, many of us, of course, uh, feel sick. And then, of course, yeah. they really get sick into this because they all wow. the grief comes back again. So, wow. uh, for me, uh, we cannot remedy grief uh, just by the incident, uh, exploring yeah. or being yeah. aware of that incident or do perspective shifting. Yeah. We need to go before that yeah. and really be thorough about our relationship. Yeah. Wonderful, Bina. Wonderful. That was that was really, really beautiful and insightful and very sophisticated sharing there. Wow. 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 All right. So so we, we, we just 
Not that we're really looking at time, but I think this is a very yes. cool point that we can end on. But I want to really re-emphasize something. So I, I like to do this uh, but basically as like a takeaway and said, you know, today we shared huge, huge, huge concepts and huge topics, life-changing life as in your entire life, capital L, life-changing concepts understandings insights right really big deal stuff but but we tend to sometimes that's so big we get a bit overwhelmed where do i start where do i start and then we lose connection to that mourners point because we don't know where to start so i did recommend starting yes. with perspective shifting to multiple perspectives on anything right just just to develop this as a habit but that's only one potential way of starting on it so what i want to say though is we are going to be sharing these big deal overview concepts as well as, as we go through the story, we are going to get to those applications of those starting points. We're going to see it in action, right? So, so don't, 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 don't get stuck on this that uh, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. It's too much for me. So what? It'll come back later. We're going to come back to it. Just remember this, that we're going to come back to it. We're going to repeat it. We're going to go over it. And we are going to get to the starting points, right? So I, I, I know a lot of times these things, they, they seem like, oh, too much. That just seems like, right? So we need to build the foundations. We need to build the building blocks. Like today we were showing what the roof is, as it were. Yeah, well, okay, we're going to get there. We have to build up the walls. Or first we have to build the foundations. So we're going to be doing all of this. So just, uh, you know, chill a little bit if, if it doesn't all click and make sense. Or if it did click and make sense, but you sort of maybe, well, I don't know how to use it. Don't worry, just chill. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. This is a long story. It's a long story. I mean, the whole thing, right? We're going to be sharing the demonstration of alternatives. So if you are in this for the personal growth and learning, just relax. It'll come. Look at Sher today. right? I mean, that, that was like, I think, three or four years ago, if not more. I don't know how long ago that was, right? The perspective shifting workshop that Sher came to. And it's a very cool workshop, by the way. Um, we can do, anybody wants to do it. It's very cool. But it didn't click until now, or at least not fully. Right? So things, as long as you keep going and making the effort, just know I'm storing it there. I'm storing it. I'm lighting up little points. Now, the point that I started with that I'm trying to light up, well, uh, maybe not that one because it's kind of a big point. I need to light up all the little points around it first. Yeah. So this is, this is the key point. Just keep lighting up the little points of understanding and at the one that you didn't know, uh, it will light up. It will light up. That's the magic. And this happens regularly with Sir, right? More and more lately, right, Sir? It's become a, a an increasing frequency. All right. Uh, Sir says she has to say bye bye. All right. All right. Okay. No problem. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Sir. And may the morning. I also, you. I also need, to, uh, need to confess okay. that it, uh, the perspective shifting. Yes. Well, one second, one second, one second. Pause, 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 pause there. One second. You have to confess. Hold on your confession. I want to say hello to Sarah. So hello, okay. Sarah. You came right at the end, but we were about to end. But Sarah, uh, before I, I, I'm happy to extend this, right? Uh, only for you. So uh, sure has gone. Maybe others are going. But Sarah, if there is something that's in your heart, something that's pressing on you, something that you want to ask about, that you want to share, please do. Please do. Please do. Yes. And and we'll take that in there. So we'll, we'll give while, while, while Bina says about what she was busy saying. So I interrupted her there. Uh, please, 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 please share, uh, Sarah, if there's something going on for you. Yes, please. Share. And we'll, and we'll, we'll chat about it. We'd, we'd love to. We want to get to know you a bit more and have you interact and connect. We love this, Sarah. We absolutely yes. love it. And I love that you said hi. Just that and that alone is a big deal. It's a very big deal to us. Yes. yes? All right, please yes. keep going, Bina. Please keep going. I was just saying that, okay, this uh, understanding that, okay, I was assuming that I, I know and I understand what Sil was sharing about the perspective shifting, but it's still, I was not able to do that as, as fully or as much as I really want to. So, and I was like, oh my God, this man has really some superpower of like really perspective shifting, and I can never be like this. How he always have something, something different to say that. And it was a really uh, uh, quite irritating in the beginning because my ego was saying that, okay, he is just saying this just he, because he wants to be different. That's it. He, he always just doing that. 
uh, and that was like, ah, oh, okay, so I'm not going to pay that. That was the idea. And, uh, and then, of course, the, uh, after some time, I realized that, no, it's not like that. Even, even if it is that, he needs a lot of skills and, uh, and of course, awareness to, to do that. And, uh, but it was, I assume that I have learned, okay, I'm, I have done way of impeccability and I have it now. It was not really settled till I did a practical exercise. I got a chance to do that, but still was a uh, perspective shifting exercise we did. And I made, I just write a short note about that, uh, jumping outside the box. And it mm. just came randomly. It was just a post and uh, I respond to that. And uh, it was a very cliche answers. Uh, the question was like, okay, if you have, if you, if money is not a problem, where you would love to like to live. And I was just responding very cliche things. And then uh, Sir came and he says, Be now, when they are saying that, okay, it's not a problem. When access is not a problem, then why are you not thinking outside the cliches and yeah. box, outside the box? And then he actually showed me how to do that. That was the moment my whole perspective actually shifted towards the perspective mm. shifting. Mm. And I realized that this is how we actually do it. So it's not like uh, as we, when we are reading, when we are doing everything, it is going to click the way we really want it. Uh, it we need to just, just be persistent. Keep doing, keep doing it. Time yeah, will come yeah. and things will fall in place. Things will exactly. come so Exactly. Exactly. This is what happened. With exactly. Me. And, and things make sense in ways we don't always see, but we can learn to see how. And we get gifts from the universe. Bina, okay, so, yes. Will, 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 will you please read Sarah's gift to yes. us? What yes. a gift your question, uh, Sarah. If you listen to the whole show, you'll see, man, right? Where did we start this whole uh, show? I shouldn't call it a show, this live. It's not a show. Sorry, yes. I, I, I've got, I, I don't mean to. I don't even think of it as a show. All right. Okay. Uh, and Lisa's responding there. So please, please read uh, uh, okay. um, Sarah's. She says uh, that. Okay. So Sarah says, uh, I'm in the let go uh, process. And uh, then she says, I'm wondering about discovering my life path attachments mm. and recognition and mm, repatterning. Re, I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm not. Repatterning? Re, re repatterning, I guess. Yes, patterning. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Breaking yes. habits, in other words, repatterning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, exactly. Uh, Lisa, but there are, Lisa. There is so much more involved into that. Let's hear from Lisa. Let's hear from Lisa. Lisa, how would you respond to, 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 to Sarah there? Or please just respond anyway, not how. Just, just please, whatever you have to share. If you're still there, I don't know. Um, uh, Sarah, your question, I'm wondering about discovering my life path attachments. And when I first read your, your comment there, I, I, I read it as life path. Yeah, full stop. There's a full stop there, right? I read it like that. So, yes. You read it without the full stop. Oh, I but think it's a full, full stop. stop, I guess. <laughs> oh, 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 it sounded to me like you read it without the full stop. All right. So, how do I discover my life path? Um, and then attachments is, is added in there as a, like a bonus thing. Well, not bonus, but as a, to give us more understanding. So this is precisely what we were talking about to start the thing. I, I had a profound share to say essentially, and the question was to say, how can we matter or how do we matter, right? So we say, hmm, life path, or did you say life path? Yeah, you said life path, right? Uh, and, and, and we can say, how do I, was it discover? Oh, how do I go about discovering my life path? All right, so 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 let's let's approach this from sort of a different angle, and we say, let's assume as a starting point that that your um, that your life path is is some kind of moreness. Yeah, we use this concept moreness a lot, right? And let's work backwards from there, right? So. So and I'm also, saying that she needs more context, uh, and uh, but because you asked her to respond, that's why I'm sorry I interrupt you. But uh, no problem, uh, this no is what Lisa said that need more context. 
Uh, ah, and uh, ah. I would say, uh, Sarah, please do uh, uh, watch this Keep and please do come uh, tomorrow again because we yeah. are going to be live again, of course, yeah, tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Uh, from 10 yeah. to 12. And then we yeah. will have more time if you can. So please do come. And of course, right now, Sil is going to respond to that too. Yes. Okay. Please, so please. so I want to say real, real quick here. I just as a, I, I don't mean to be giving a pat answer or pat response because first of all, uh, I don't feel it's my my task, my responsibility to give an answer. I don't think there is such a thing as an answer for this. But what I can share is techniques and mechanisms for connecting to this, right? So one thing I would just simply say is look at that 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 question that you asked, right? Uh, you didn't even ask a question. You said, I'm wondering about discovering my life path. Now, part of what we've been, been sharing here, if you go through the recording of this, the replay, is to perspective shift really, really profoundly and to question the question itself. And, and then Lisa said, you know, sometimes when we ask a question, the answer is, it comes with the, with the actual asking of it, and what comes up in you. And sometimes, Lisa, the answer is inherent in the question. Now, Sarah didn't actually ask a question. She shared what she was wondering about. But let's take this as a question, right? I'm wondering about discovering my life path, right? Discovering. 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 For me, the little 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 lights are going off. They're starting to click there. Oh, 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 oh. My life path is discovering. Holy moly. The answer was right there all along. Your subconscious was putting it. He didn't say finding. Yeah, he said discovering. See? Self-discovery. Self-discovery. It's in the name of the group. All right? Discovering, discovering, discovering. If you say, ooh, take this as a cue from the universe, from, from mourners, from your subconscious to say, ooh, there you go, Sarah. Your life path is discovering, capital D, discovering, profound discovering. That means investigating, exploring, querying, questioning. Right? If you take that as a life path, ah, does that not unhook you from the attachments of assuming that your life path is some external thing, some different thing, some this, whatever, right? So our attachments to our assumptions is what disconnects us from discovery. Let me repeat that. Our attachment to our assumptions prevents us from or inhibits us from discovery, yeah? Or limits our discovery. So when we say attachments, what are attachments? Attachments are our defaults, are our beliefs, our habits. All of those are some kind of an attachment. An attachment is a thing that holds us, that binds us, yes? So when we start to let go of our paradigms, our defaults, our beliefs, our assumptions, all of those are attachments. So when you put attachments together with discovering, yeah, start investigating those attachments, What? Whatever is holding you in place, whatever's preventing you from discovering, and now suddenly you've got a life path. The life path to unhook from attachments, the, and the life path to discover new options that aren't limiting, that aren't binding. Yes? So the answer was right there in what you said. I need more context. Assume your life path makes sense as it is right now. Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Assume you're already on your life path. Yes, yes, that's, that's where I'm at, exactly. So, so this is, you know, uh, Sarah, so often we come, and this was something that happened earlier today in a very uh, uh, technical, practical sense. Somebody was coming up upon something that, that sort of like didn't make sense, and they wanted to check whether it's, it's just them or if it actually doesn't make sense. So they enlisted the assistance of others. And so we all went through it. No, it doesn't make sense. Can't be as is. So they said, well, okay, it's not me. So now I feel this is that if you're already there, this that's where I'm at. 
right? Uh, then, then you're just confirming and checking to see that what you understand uh, that, you know, it does make sense to you and your life path is, you know, this discovery or discovering and unhooking from attachments and discovering what your attachments are and discovering what you can replace your attachments with. This is a wonderful life path. This is an incredible life path, but it's very good to check to see, you know, just to get that confirmation sometimes that it's not just me. Uh, right. I, I don't want to just believe that my sensibility is sensible. I like to check it. Right. Because I don't want to be arrogant. So this is very, very powerful. Be wonderful. Yes. When you're full of wonder, the whole world changes. Right. And we can only wonder when we assume and insist and accept that it all is wonderful in the first place. Yeah. Sarah, I, I, I don't want to just sound like I'm sort of giving patent quick answers or responses to what you said. I take what you said very, very seriously. But you come at the tail end of where this has been the entire discussion for two hours. So it was right there for me to share it, right? Without any buildup and everything, right? So I, I, I take what you say very, very, very earnestly and very seriously. And it just happened to be that I could share a response that came right away and immediate. Yeah. So this is very powerful. This is very, very cool. So trust yourself, Sarah. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Trust you. You are a discoverer. Yes. A discoverer of mourners. A discoverer of alternative. Yeah. Ah, all good. All good, Sarah. All good. That's that's a good spot to be in. You open then. You open then, I would imagine, or at least hope so. Yeah. So uh, so so does this idea of you being a discoverer, a discoverer of mourners. Right, a discoverer of alternatives, a discoverer of non-attachment. Does that resonate with you? Does that click? Does that sound good? Feel good to you? Yes, wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so thrilled you yelled, Sarah. I, I, I cannot tell you how delighted I am that you shared and you asked and that. And we were about to go. We were, we were about to sign off and then you came. So, so uh, you know, uh, be attunement. aware. This is attunement. Yes. This is attunement that we take it as it comes, right? We, we, we have that flexibility. Um, uh, I, and, and again, you know, even though I've got some pressure to sign off, I, I, I don't want to sign off until I feel that, that you are resolved, that you, you do feel happy and that you do like this. And, and Lisa, does, uh, I want to ask Lisa before we go, does my sharing of the response, did that make some sense to you? Did that connect with you? I mean, as a response to Sarah, not, not to you personally. Yeah. I'm, I'm just asking for, you know, feedback because I, are you complete? Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, too wonderful, too wonderful. All right, now, just because you're complete doesn't mean that there's not mourners possible, yes? Because we can be complete and also be yes. more. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow, wow, wow. What a beautiful thing to say to Sarah. Yes, exactly, Sarah. You complete us. You complete us. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, too beautiful, too beautiful, Lisa. Too beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, too beautiful. Yes, and whole. Now, exactly. Now, does that mean that there's not more to learn, more to discover? No. I, I am a discoverer. As a discoverer, I am whole. Yeah? But that just means still I'm, I, I'm a whole as a discoverer. But what does a discoverer do? They discover more. So I am complete and I am more. Yeah, this is too awesome. This is too awesome. This is too, too too awesome and that okay. self love that self appreciation this is yes. really really profound i am hearing through my through my x-ray senses let's just call them that 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 this point of being yes. complete and yes and whole was a big deal yeah yeah yes. was a big deal Thank to you. sarah no yeah. never always more yes exactly exactly more. Exactly. So please, Sarah, if you can at all possibly come tomorrow, come, please come, please come. I know you came before and I know people can't always come, but if you at all can, please come, please come. 
Um, I mean, I, I do have to go. Unfortunately, I do have a time pressure sensitive thing that's pressuring me. Uh, but, but it doesn't mean that we're ending this discussion. No, we'll continue it tomorrow. Yes, yeah? we, we will we'll continue. continue tomorrow. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, yeah. Norma, Lisa, Sarah, Ramsey, and um, DJ and, and Sher, sure. and yeah. John. And, and John, and yes, John dropped off so soon. Peter. I would have liked John yes. to stay more. No, it was late for him. So yes. Oh, okay. So right, thank you so right. much, everyone, for coming, and hope to see you tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. And thank you. Thank Bye you for now. sharing. Good morning, Sarah. Yes, and may the mourners be with you. May the mourners be with you, always, always. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.